Every single YouTuber collectively understands one thing. The video that you're most passionate about will not always be the one that takes off. I've been very blessed to have a handful of videos really succeed online here on YouTube, but many, many others never quite made it into the algorithm. With that in mind, this video is a little bit different. For the past three years, I've uploaded a new video every single week, and now I'm taking a chance to look back and pick out 10 of my personal favorites. Coming to you from the catalog of the Standpy channel, I'm Standpy, and these are my top 10 Standpy videos. Number 10. The first thing on this top 10 list is another top 10. The top 10 things missing from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now, admittedly, this video really did not go anywhere when it came to actual reach, but for me, this was a lot of fun to make. It was something that I spent a lot of time thinking about as I played the game. You know, what things could make this already really great game even better? And my formula for how I would make it was a mix of serious with humor. Some of the top 10 things were not real. Other ones were completely serious. The good news is some of the stuff I complained about ended up being brought in through DLC, but the one I care most about, number one, still isn't there. Go watch the video and find out. It's not Zelda without this one thing. Number 9 YouTube videos come in many shapes and sizes, but one that I've always been pretty averse to is the reaction video. I've always felt the reaction videos themselves are genuinely kind of cheap content. You're not really bringing much to the table other than your emotional response to something. And for many, this can be a lazy crutch to lay on. I decided, however, that I would make an exception. I would record a reaction video for IWF 2016. The International Wrestling Festival has become a very instrumental part of my life as a creator. It's significant because of its connections it's built for me, and because it's given me a chance to meet the people behind these different projects. So, for this reason, IWF 2016 Make Spanking Great Again, my reaction video, makes it to number 9 on this list. I made this reaction video for one reason. I knew the people who made IWF would be able to see it. Unlike most who I think are doing it more so for their audience, I wanted to do it for the creators. I wanted them to see how their video made me feel. Because when you're making something like this, you have no idea exactly how people are going to react, and there's no way to really break it down by just a YouTube comment. I wanted them to see my moment-to-moment -moment reactions, and I definitely think everybody was pretty pleased with the results. So, for that reason, I just want to say thank you again for all the creativity that everybody working on IWF throughout the years has put in, and of course, thank you for welcoming me into the Gachimuchi community after that video. It's for these reasons and more that this video made the list. Yugami Ne Na. Number 8. Ever since I was a little kid, singing and dancing have always had some place in my life, and I think that's pretty true of most people. Another thing that was true of many people is that Bowsette was probably the hottest new thing to come out of the comic doujin industry. What started off as a simple joke turned into a huge widespread phenomenon, and I decided that I wanted to contribute in some way too. The idea for Bowsette's Hellfire came about after I'd spent enough time around different people talking about it, and finally I decided, well, let's rewrite the song and do an entire routine for it. What I got in the end wasn't exactly dance choreography, but was meant to be taken like a sort of stage show, if you were seeing Hunchback of Notre Dame only with waifus in it. I had a great deal of fun working on this one. The hardest part was definitely getting my green screen combined with my costuming to work out, and even building the costume itself took plenty of time and decision making. I remember consciously thinking that I wanted to be sort of religious neutral, I didn't want to offend any particular religion, so I made my costume have as many different elements from different things as I could without being too specific, and I, th I think I achieved that in the end result. Definitely the most exciting part was mouthing all of the words as I danced around in my room in front of a green screen, trying to maintain the illusion that I wasn't just standing in one place the entire time. I had a lot of fun with all the different effects, finding all the different art. I probably saved more art assets for that video than any other project I've ever worked on, but the end result is what it is. It was definitely a lot of fun, and I hope you had a chance to check it out. Number 7 Coming in at number 7 is, appropriately, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the seventh stand user. This was, for me, the most intensive commitment I'd ever made to having a streaming schedule in... ever. I spent every single week on Tuesdays, I believe, streaming a new episode at least one hour, just like a weekly TV program. 
What made this particular journey special was that I didn't have a lot of experience with this game. I didn't know anything about it, but I do, of course, have a ton of JoJo-related experience. Finding out that this game was actually a really well-made RPG and not just a really faithful JoJo adaptation made it all the more satisfying as I played through it. It was really nice also having different friends in the chat, especially my friend Shadow, who gave me a lot of tips as I was playing. The most satisfying part was definitely getting through every major cutscene and being able to do live dubbing on the fly. I've always had a hard time justifying why anybody should watch someone else play video games, but I felt like, in my case, this was a good reason. What made it special? What made it uniquely a standpy experience? I know a lot of people tend to just read over the different dialogue and scenes and things like that, and that's totally normal, but for me, I was so focused on making it sound like a genuine JoJo's Bizarre Adventure dub that the end result is something I'm very satisfied with. I've always had a tendency when I want to look back on what it was like to just jump back in and go back to those cutscenes and hear exactly how I chose to do it on the fly. It was so much fun. I really love that game and I cannot stress enough that if you like JoJo, you should go play 7th Stand User. And if you like hearing me do voices for JoJo, well, you've got 20 episodes to go and do that. So definitely take a look. I had a lot of fun. Number 6. At number 6 is another JoJo related project. Naturally, JoJo has always had a place on my channel, and another series that has surprisingly made its way in has been Castlevania. It should come as no surprise that eventually I would find a way to merge the two. Particularly because everybody compares Phantom Blood and Castlevania 1. So, that's exactly what I did with JoJovania. This is one of those videos that is one of the most popular on my channel, and is the one that people know when I talk about things I've made. Beyond that, just working on the original JoJo sprites, adapting them for Castlevania, and then recreating scenes in Castlevania was a pretty time-intensive process, but one that I think really paid off. People remember it. They really liked it. They want to see an actual ROM hack of JoJovania. That's really, really satisfying to hear. Working on that project definitely took a lot of time, but it was also one of the most long-term rewarding. It has done a lot for my channel, getting me a lot more viewers and a lot more subscribers, but funny enough, when I initially uploaded it in October, it didn't take off until February of the next year, so I thought that's an interesting little detail about how erratic YouTube can be. In any case, thank you all for supporting JoJovania and for checking out its sequel, though it did not make this list. I really appreciate all the different support I've gotten over the years. And yes, I am aware, metal cannot hold Hamon. I have- I- I read your comments, I get it. You, you don't need to comment it again, I guarantee you, like, 20 people before you did so just a month ago, and 30 before them the month before. I also understand that snakes are not poisonous, but are venomous. Yes, I've learned from your comments. Now stop telling me those two things. I'm aware. I've learned. Thank you. Anyway, go check out JoJoVania. Number 5. Character Karaoke has been a long-standing staple of the Standpy channel for many years now, and it's something that I've really loved working on. The process can be grueling at times, but when you have help, it really changes things. Enter one of my favorites of all time, Dance Robotnik Dance. Having the amazing Bergmite helping me by doing the artwork for this video, one, improved the quality because, frankly, her drawings are better than what I would have made, and two, it was just so fun to work with. I mean, I love Dance Robotnik Dance. It's one of my favorite videos I've ever put out, which is why it's on this list, and the lyrics have stuck with me. The, being Eggman has always been one of those things I just absolutely love, and even in the long term, I would love to be the voice of Dr. Eggman in something official. It'd be so satisfying and cool to do that. I really enjoyed this video. I love Dance Robot Dance, the song that it's based on. I really think that overall, this is definitely one of mine that I want everyone to check out. PINGUS! Number 4 At this point in time, I haven't done a whole lot of live-action stuff on my channel, for a number of reasons. One, the production time is generally not going to be tight enough for the one week I was working with, and two, just the overall process is much more grueling than anything else I usually work on. That's where we enter a lovely exception, my 1000 subscriber special. Octopath Travelers. I spent a lot of time with Octopath Traveler when it came out of the Nintendo Switch, and I enjoyed it enough to be inspired to make a live-action version of it. Each of these was an eight-part skit that was designed to embody each of the eight classes in the game. 
Making notes of the different plot points and details behind them, or just trying to summarize their personalities into a single concept, that was always the fun part of writing this, and this was easily the most intensive thing I've ever worked on for my channel. Like, there's no question this was the hardest thing to do. Most of what I had to do was solo with some camera help from Bergmite, and of course the support of people on Patreon to help pay for some of the props, but ultimately this was definitively the hardest one to complete. I also definitely have to thank both my mom and Bergmite again for actually being part of the supply process when it came to costuming. I had a lot of limitations and had to figure things out for myself. I mean, you could see in the video I'm wearing stuff like bed sheets and sweater vests and this and that that I got from who knows where, all just try to make a single coherent project. And the end result is something I still have fun watching again and again. Octopath Travelers is without a doubt one of the least watched videos on my channel, for reasons I don't completely understand. My subscriber count was pretty small at the time, being only a thousand, and of course the title itself, Octopath Travelers, doesn't exactly have the best search engine optimization. Regardless, this is something that I really look back on with fondness, and Yes, you have to sometimes stop and think, this video was filmed in public in many cases where other people were doing things. I remember filming the cleric, I walked past a group of children who were on some kind of field trip and they were all laughing and didn't know what to think of it. I just smiled and kept on marching with my staff in hand. Or when I was in the library for the scholar, I walked past a lot of people to get to where I filmed that section. And yes, it was definitely that mental place of, you're here performing, you're fine, do your thing, no one's gonna have a problem. Luckily enough, that was the truth, I got no issues filming, and had a lot of fun doing it. If you want to see live-action Stan Pie portraying eight different characters and a couple extras just to see what it's like, well, this is the video for you. One last thing that makes this video incredibly special to me is the presence of my dog Tango. I don't have any videos of him other than this one single video. And as it turned out, he would pass away not long after it was done being filmed. So, for this reason too, Octopath Travelers is very special in my heart. I miss you, little buddy. Number 3 Most YouTube channels are often remembered for that first major breakthrough. The video of theirs that somehow managed to finally punch through the wall and reach a wide audience. In my case, that video was a codec call. Isabel meets Solid Snake. After watching one of the Nintendo Directs, I got some sort of inspiration. I don't quite know exactly how it hit me, but I thought, man, Isabel and Snake are in the same game. What if they had a conversation? And we kind of went from there. I sat down and I wrote it and I really put together what I felt was a very sincere and in-character dialogue for the two of them. What I ended up getting was something that, the first time I finished, after adding music, watching all the way through, made me cry. When I uploaded this video, I had good feelings about it. But, just like JoJovania, it would take several months before it actually got anywhere. My clever move was starting to promote it again once Smash Brothers came out, Smash Brothers Ultimate. The results were phenomenal. My subscriber count grew tremendously, and of course, the views were just pouring in. But, most importantly of all, I built something meaningful, something that made me and other people feel something, something that was true to the characters and didn't rely on memes or jokes to hit the points home. This was a true, sincere attempt at creating meaningful character dialogue, and I think it succeeded. That's why this is my favorite of all my codec calls. Number two. Parody songs and Gachi Muchi have both been a very big part of my channel, so why not incorporate them both together? Enter Super Morale Odyssex. This was originally made as a commercial for the International Wrestling Festival 2017, and I cannot stress how much of a huge honor it was to be welcomed to make a commercial for that. I actually had the honor of making two different commercials, the other one being JoJo related. But that aside, this is definitely one of my favorite videos of all time. I spent a lot of time, I would say at least a week, grinding on how I should make this work right, making original Billy Harrington Super Mario Bros. sprites, and finding different ways to make it work. Having help from Brayden and Mords to make the final product was something I'm so very grateful for. But really, like, I cannot stress enough how much I love this video. I still show it to people, I still laugh about it, and of course, every time I hear a Jump Up Superstar, I have to sing along. 
It's time to grab onto his hair, spank his derriere, let the wrestling sweep you away. The Honorable Mentions. We're almost at the very top of my standpie top 10 list, but before I get to number one, I want to stop and talk about a few honorable mentions that I think are worth checking out, even though they didn't quite make the list. First up, one of my ultimate comic dubs, Phantom Blood Until We Eternally Rest. I've always really loved this comic, and I thought it's finally time to give it an adaptation. As part of my usual Castlevania and Phantom Blood October lineup, this was the time to make it. It was one of the most intensive editing experiences of my life, trying to turn this video around in just three days, and I gotta say, I wasn't able to do it at my original production timeline. The video was just too intensive, and I actually had to delay for the first time, so that was something pretty extreme for me, but I loved it. The next one is Funky Flights, another foray into the live action with Stan Pie. This was one I filmed at the beach. It was a lot of fun dressing up as Funky Kong, dancing around with a boogie board, and of course, channeling that inner Ricardo Milos. I also have a fond memory because the lifeguard on duty was really cool about it and even offered me one of his cones that I could use to keep my board in the air. Next up, VG Ducks. I've been working on video game duck videos for a long time and I don't really know how to explain them other than by calling them video game ducks. This is something that is just, you gotta watch it to appreciate it. Uh, some people find it absolutely drop dead hilarious, others don't really get it. But regardless of whichever you fit into, I definitely think they're worth taking a look at. I've got a whole playlist. And lastly, Travis Strikes Again, a succinct review. I like making video game reviews, but they don't always have a very wide net. But in this case, working on the Travis Strikes Again video really felt good. I tied up everything I felt was important about the game in a succinct review, and for those who've checked it out, well, I hope it gave you some influence on what the game was like. In any case, those are a couple honorable mentions. We're now going to move into the home stretch. It's time for number one. Number one. I've made a lot of different videos over the last three years, but none of them quite hit as hard as the one that got me to a thousand subscribers. A man named Waluigi. Waluigi Sings Country Roads is my number one on this list. Going back and looking at the production process for it, I had so much fun making it. Singing the song has remained a part of my regular pastimes. I do not sing Country Roads, I sing Waluigi's Country Roads. Whenever I hear it, I do it. At conventions, when they have karaoke rooms, I ask for Country Roads and I replace the lyrics on the fly. This is, without a doubt, my favorite video I've ever worked on and ever put on my channel. It's just so satisfying to review, see what I did with the Waluigi plush, and it just makes me feel happy. It makes people think the man deserves to be in Smash Brothers, and regardless of your stance on it, I think that the dub itself, the actual adaptation of the song, was worth it. If you've not watched them before, you're going to take the time and check them out for yourself firsthand and see what it is about them that made me put them as my top 10. Until next time, be sure to check out all of the videos here on the Standpi channel. You've got three years worth at the time of this recording to go and check out, which means there's plenty for everyone. Whether it's music, live action, comic dubs, or anything in between, there's something for you on the Standpi channel. I've always prided myself on being a variety channel, not committed to a single format, but instead just making the videos that I felt like working on. That's why we have such a diverse list here on this top 10. So until next time, this is Standpi. Thank you so much for watching. Click that subscribe button, click that like button, leave a comment, and tell me your favorite Standpi video. And of course, adi adi arrivederci. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.